I got your profile for evaluation. So can we start with your interview? Hello. Yes, yes. we can uh, start with the interview. Okay. Can I please introduce yourself? Uh, I would like to know your skill set and the experience uh, you have. Yes. Work in Core Java uh, Spring Spring Boot Microservices, and my project also includes uh, Java related features uh, along with the MySQL database. I have uh, around four years of experience uh, with uh, in IT industry, and I am currently working in the banking domain. So that's about uh, my introduction. Okay. So let's start with Core Java. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell me uh, what is platform independence in Java? Why Java is called as platform independence? Uh, yes. Java is called as platform independent because uh, you can compile your program on one machine and you can run your program on different machines. That means you can compile your program on Windows machine where your Java file gets converted uh, into dot class file. And as, as uh, far as JVM uh, is installed on Linux or Mac OS, you can take your class file from Windows machine and run on Linux or Mac machine. That is the reason it is platform independent and it is known as uh, write once, run anywhere. Okay. What is the difference between JDK, JRE and JVM? JDK is known as Java Development Kit. Uh, if you want to compile your program and run your program, uh, that means developers want to compile their program, uh, debug their program, uh, then you need JDK. And when you are giving this program to clients and they only want to run uh, your program, in that case, you will have JRE. And JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine, which takes your bytecode and interprets your bytecode and sometimes it converts your bytecode into a machine code with the help of JIT. So JDK is used for doing the development of your Java related projects. JRE is where you want to run your program and JVM is the actual uh, virtual machine which takes your bytecode and interprets and runs your program. So that is about JDK, uh, JRE and JVM. Okay, so uh, let us consider I have a string Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm declaring a string variable string s equal to new string of Sachin. Okay, I have created a string by using new keyword with mm -hmm. Sachin as a value. Okay. Then I am declaring one more string, mm -hmm. string s1 equal to Sachin in double quotes. Okay. Now I have two strings. Okay. The Can you tell me if I write s dot equals s1, what will be the output? Uh, if s dot equals uh, is written, then the output will be true uh, because it does uh, actual matching of the string, which is Sachin. Okay. And what if I write s equal equal to s1, what will happen? Uh, it will return false because in the first case, uh, you wrote uh, s equal to new Sachin, in which case uh, the string got created in heap. And in the second case, it is literal. That means uh, these are two different instances of uh, string, one in the heap and one in uh, the perm gen. So equal to equal to will return false. Okay, fine. Do you have any idea about garbage collection? Garbage collection, yes. Uh, in Java, uh, we do not allocate or deallocate memory. It is done automatically uh, by your uh, JVM. So garbage collection is a mechanism when the object is no longer referenced uh, from your either stack uh, or a heap uh, and the object becomes uh, reference less. That means it is not referenced from anywhere. At, at that stage, the garbage collection runs uh, after some frequency and uh, it garbage collects your object after certain duration. And that object will be deleted from your heap memory. So this is known as uh, garbage collection in Java. Okay, so can I run the garbage collection forcefully? Uh, there is one API that uh, gives instruction uh, to initiate the garbage collection, but you cannot forcefully run it. Uh, even if you give the instruction, uh, it will take its uh, own time and it will uh, run according to itself. So you cannot forcefully run, uh, but you can give instruction or hints uh, to, to the JVM to run the garbage collection. Okay, fine. Uh, can you tell me the contract between equals and hash code method? which are used in collections. Okay. You want to know the uh, contract between these two methods? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. 
So there's a contract. Um, if two objects, when consider an example where I have two employees, EMP one and EMP two, and EMP one dot equals EMP two returns me true. That means when I call equals on EMP one and pass uh, EMP two, it returns true. So whenever two objects are equal, their hash codes have to be same. But uh, uh, the reverse is not true. That means whenever two objects having same hash code, the equal might uh, return true or might return false. That means whenever two objects are equal, then hash codes have to be exactly same. But whenever two objects have the same hash code, that does not mean that both objects are equal. So this is the contract. Okay, fine. Uh, what is the difference between abstract class and interface? And can you tell me if, when we should go for abstract class and when we should go for interface? Uh, yes, abstract class is where you have some abstract methods in the class. And if there is, is a relationship uh, between uh, your classes, uh, then you can go for abstract class. But uh, if there is certain feature where there is no relationship between the classes, then you have to go for interface. Um, and by default, all the methods in the interfaces interface are uh, abstract, but uh, going forward in Java 8, um, there is a feature where you can write default methods in your interface. So just to summarize, you can go for abstract class when there is, is a relationship or parent child relationship or a super class subclass relationship, then you can go for abstract class. And if there is no such relationship between the objects, then you can go for interface. Okay, so which version of Java you are using? Is it JDK? I am using uh, Java 8 in my project. Okay, so do you know what are the features which are available in Java 8? Mm, yes, I know that there, there is the feature of Lambda, uh, there's feature of streams, then we have functional interfaces, then we have default methods. Uh, and these are these are some of the features introduced in Java 8. Okay, so uh, let us uh, consider I have a list of numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that list, uh, you can consider it as I have uh, 10 numbers in that list. Okay. All numbers are integer numbers. Okay. And I have to filter the list in such a way that the list should return only numbers which are greater than 20. Okay. Okay. So if integer is, uh, uh, if the number is greater than 20, then you have to return that number. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, can you tell me how to do it? In uh, right. I can, I can try to uh, use streams here. Uh, suppose the name of the list is numbers. What I can do is numbers dot stream. I can get the stream out of it. And then I can call filter method uh, with the uh, predicate, which is your number is greater than uh, 10. And then finally I can call the collect method and use collectors dot to list where I'm going to collect the uh, results in the form of list where all the numbers will be greater than 10. So this is how I will achieve this. Okay. So how do you handle exceptions in Java? Uh, there is a mechanism of try catch. Uh, I can surround my code uh, with try and whenever some exception occurs, uh, the catch will be called, which is just below the uh, try. So using try catch, I can handle the exceptions. Okay. So can I use multiple catch blocks with a single try block? Uh, Yes, you can use multiple catch block uh, with a single uh, try block in Java that is allowed. Okay, so is there any order which I need to follow or I can write any kind of exception at any order? Uh, there is there is some order that you have to follow. You have to catch uh, the more specialized exception first and uh, below that you have to handle a more generalized exception. Example, if you are handling arithmetic exception, then you have to handle arithmetic exception first, and then you have to handle the exception uh, class uh, object. That means arithmetic exception first, and then the exception. So you have to handle specialized version first, and then the generalized version. So this is the rule uh, while having multiple catch blocks. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. So do you have uh, experience on Spring and Spring Boot as well, right? Uh, yes, I have experience in uh, Spring and Spring Boot, both. Okay. Uh, can you tell me uh, what is a dependence injection and what is inversion of control in Spring? Uh, yes. I'll try to explain dependency injection where consider an example, you have uh, an employee class and uh, employee has address. So whenever you try to create employee class, uh, your address uh, should also be created and should be injected in that employee uh, employee object. 
So this is known as dependency injection, where the object having dependency are injected uh, automatically from outside. So this is known as uh, dependency injection or DI. And, and uh, what about IOC? IOC is known as inversion of control. Inversion of control means instead of you creating object yourself, uh, in a classic manner, what we do, uh, we do employee E equal to new employee. Uh, we use new keyword ourselves in the program. But um, when we go with the Spring Framework, Spring Framework uh, does this uh, does this for us. Spring creates the employee object, and when you ask for the employee object, it gives you reference to that employee object. That means the control is uh, inverted from you creating object to Spring creating object. So this is known as inversion of control. Okay. What is application context and bin factory in Spring? Application context and bin factory both are containers, uh, but uh, there is one. There are few differences. Uh, bin factory only allows to uh, to do wiring and to create objects, but uh, application context can do uh, wiring and create objects along with few more things. Application context has uh, bin post processor. It has bin factory post processor. Then you can do internationalization and also you can uh, handle application events. So you can say. Bean factory is the simple version where you can achieve a dependency index injection, but uh, you can't go uh, or you can't do um, more advanced uh, operations in Spring. But with application context, you can uh, do dependency injection. You can get inversion of control along with uh, bean post processor, bean factory post processor, internationalization, and uh, event handling. So that's about bean factory and application context. Okay. Do you know different types of injections? Uh, there are two types of injection. One is known as setter injection and uh, one is known as constructor injection. And setter injections are done using set method of uh, the field and constructor injection is uh, done using uh, your actual construction uh, constructor call. So Spring calls your constructor and does the injection in case of constructor injection. Okay. Do you know AOP, aspect-oriented programming in Spring? Aspect-oriented programming, yes. I know aspect-oriented programming. And um, I can say aspect-oriented programming is used uh, to solve your cross-cutting concerns. Example, uh, when cross-cutting concerns comes into picture, uh, you can think of uh, logging. Uh, we do logging and we have to go and write code in each and every file of your project. And if I uh, want to change some configuration of your logging, uh, then I have to go and modify uh, all the files in my project. So instead of uh, handling um, this cross-cutting concern in, in this manner, what we do, we write aspects where uh, whatever you have to log uh, is outside your uh, classes and it is not written in your classes. That means you can go and change the configuration at one place and it will get reflected in all the classes where your uh, point cuts or join points are applied. Okay, fine. So how do you handle transactions in your Spring project? Uh, there is one abstraction known as uh, known as uh, Platform Transaction Manager. I take help of uh, Platform Transaction Manager to commit or uh, roll back my transaction um, on the underlying JDBC connection. Okay, okay let's move to the Spring Boot. Uh, so can you tell me why we should use Spring Boot? Uh, Spring Boot. In Spring, uh, there are various uh, configurations that we have to do manually. Uh, Spring Boot, as the name suggests, uh, it, it uh, bootstraps all those configurations for us and it makes really very simple to uh, create your uh, Spring Boot application. So it provides production grade application uh, and you can uh, quickly go and uh, create production grade application and deploy it. So that is the reason we use uh, Spring Boot. Okay, so what are the annotations which you have used in your Spring Boot application? Uh, I have I used uh, at the rate REST controller for my Spring Boot application. And uh, I have used various uh, annotations like uh, get mapping, or put mapping and post mapping in my REST controller to handle uh, get push, put and post uh, requests. Okay, so what is the difference between post mapping and uh, put mapping? Uh, post mapping and put mapping. If you want to create a new object uh, or uh, there is a request for creating new object, then you can go for post. And uh, if you want to update the object, then, then you generally go for put. 
Mm, okay. Do you have mentioned microservices as well in your resume? So, do you have idea about microservices, or you are just learning it? Uh, I have idea about microservices. I have used uh, it in my project. Uh, microservices is where you uh, divide your monolithic application into uh, multiple uh, small services, uh, and your microservices microservice revolves around one functionality. So consider an example you have to design Amazon.com. Uh, in in theory, uh, you have uh, three microservices. One is for uh, buyers, one is for seller, and one is for payment. So this is how we divide uh, the functionality around microservices. Uh, what is API Gateway? Do you know? API Gateway. API yeah. Gateway is the uh, entry point for your microservices where you can handle all, all the Mm, common uh, concerns like uh, authentication, your authorization, you can do it uh, at the API gateway level. And one of the most famous API gateway is Zool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, do you know the discovery server? Uh, can you repeat that again? Yes. So do you know a discovery server? Yeah, yeah. service discovery. Yes. Suppose uh, I want to know uh, one service wants to know about another service. Uh, at that point, I can take help of uh, uh, discovery service and uh, console and Eureka are two discovery uh, services uh, in the market. I have used both of them. So take an example where your uh, buyer service wants to take help of uh, your payment service. In order to get the URL of payment service, what I do is I call discovery service uh, and I ask for the URL. The discovery service, which is either console or Eureka, uh, gives me the URL and then I can hit the endpoint of, of the payment service. So that is uh, discovery service. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, in database, uh, do you know asset properties? Uh, uh, yes. Asset properties? yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Asset and... is about... Um, Automacity, uh, consistency, isolation, and durability. These are the this the full form of acid. Um, Automacity is where your transaction should either either complete fully or should uh, roll back. It shouldn't happen that uh, uh, part of transaction is completed and uh, uh, some part uh, is not completed. So that is uh, automacity. Consistency uh, where uh, before the transaction and after the transaction uh, the result should uh, should be consistent that means um, the balance is 400 and i'm adding uh, 200 to it then the result uh, should be uh, 600 uh, so that's about consistency isolation is where if multiple transactions are uh, running in parallel uh, then uh, all those transactions should not see the effect of each other uh, that is isolation and finally the durability durability is where uh, if you commit the transaction, that should be permanently stored uh, or in your database. And uh, if the database server starts, uh, stops and restarts, uh, the changes should still be there. Okay. Uh, which database you are using in your application? I'm uh, using MySQL in my uh, in my project. And then from my side, uh, do you have any question for me? Uh, yes, I just want to know uh, about the project uh, technology stack. Uh, the project for which we are having uh, is uh, includes uh, it is uh, includes uh, including uh, Spring Spring Boot microservices and we have Oracle database. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And uh, yeah, what about uh, what about the uh, results? When will I get the results? Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, you will get uh, results from HR. So I will share my feedback with HR, and HR will get back to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.